Hi everyone, this is Miss Brooks yet again um, for social studies. This should be part seven. Part seven, I believe. Should be part seven of um, social studies. Um, yesterday's video, um, the April 1st video, we were talking about why the mummification was important, who used it. Um, but today we're actually going to get into the process of mummification. Now, I will clarify, this will be not visually graphic, like I'm not showing you really any pictures per se, but if you think very, very deeply about this and you're a little skittish, um, just keep that in mind. Um, again, um, it's not meant to scare you. Um, because this is just what they believed was the right thing to do. Um, so let's get into the mummification process. So as we discussed before, many, many times it was the nobles and the pharaohs that got the mummification process, um, done to their bodies as soon as they died. Um, some animals, um, if you realized in King Tut's tomb, there wasn't just animals, they would put everything they needed for the afterlife in that tomb and sometimes there would be um babies in the tomb as weird as that sounds um and we're still trying to speculate what's going on with the babies in king tut's tomb but again we'll get closer to that when we learn about king tut um again this won't be an extremely long video but i do want to mention that um this will be a very, very important concept and how we compare that to how we embalm nowadays. Okay. Um, so if you look at the mummification sheet, um, you're supposed to put them in order. So obviously, first things first, they have to get the body. Sometimes it would take a long time to even get the body um, so it's decomposing a little bit but the core thing is keeping it um, preserved so they try to do that as quickly as they can because as soon as that body dies it starts to decompose um, some some of you guys know what rigor mortis is it's like it's the normal when when a person passes away um, their muscles become stiff, they decompose, it's, it's weird, but the faster they get to that body to preserve it, the better preserved that body is going to be. If they wait a few days and then do it, it's not going to be as good as, okay, they just saw this pharaoh die, let's go ahead and get him in. Um, but first things first is probably... The weirdest part of the whole process. Um, so basically, in wherever they do the um, the mummification process, there is a stone slab, and they put the body on top of the stone slab. Um, if you've seen a lot of like um, crime shows and like autopsies or like. Um, those kind of videos, it's kind of the same thing, it's just made out of stone. The body's head will be slightly over the edge for this first process. And the first process is that whoever is performing the procedure, they have a hooked, um, a hooked um, tool. It's kind of like a big fishing hook, but not as big on the curved end. Um, now this part gets a little weird and there is still speculation about the logistics of how they did this. There are two, two theories that really we're working on. The biggest theory though is that when they have the head and they have this hooked tool, they stick it into the nose of the body and they pull out the brain. They pull out the entire brain. That is the biggest clue that we have because we've seen tools like that. However, the logistics of pulling out a brain through a small portion of the nose, it's, 
you would have to be really creative on how to get that out. Um, and plus, it's attached to the brainstem. So really, we're still speculating. Now, the other option, which I think is more just in my opinion from watching documentaries and researching things, um, the most logistic thing is that would they would make a, con a concoction, like a like a um, a liquid chemical thing. They would flush it into the nose to where it like makes the brain turn into like mush basically and like water and it like takes away all of the brain and they flush it out and then they fish the other stuff out which that is gross but really to me that seems the most effective way but the most the most presumed um method is just to pull it out um with the tool now again we're just like uh the brain's really important for everyday life the egyptians did not believe that um they did not think the brain was an essential organ um very different th than um what we think today um because obviously we know we can't really think of it this way today you can do a heart transplant and say someone would would stay the same and be fine um after a heart transplant but we don't do brain transplants that's just not that doesn't work um, so nowadays we understand, we have the technology to understand that the brain is an extremely important um, organ in our bodies. But yet again, that's not what the Egyptians believed. They don't have the technology like we do. So again, the first thing is to um, pull, cut out the brain through that method. Um, that surprisingly, the brain in that point kept a lot of bacteria if it was kept in there too long um the brain surprisingly is also made out of like 70 80 percent fat um so you can imagine how messy it would be if it was just left to decompose on its own so that's why they pulled it out they wanted the body to be as clean and pristine as possible even though the body is like done um Second thing they would do, um, they would wash the body and um, remove the rest of the organs. Yes, they still made the bodies look very pretty. Um, they would try and do some makeup. Um, again, this was a really weird part where they would pull out the rest of the organs. Um, those canopic jars that we were talking about, um, those were for certain organs such as the lungs the intestines, the stomach, and the lungs. The, did I say lungs? <laughs> the lung, lungs, stomach, intestines, and liver. That's what I was missing. Liver. Those four were each reviewed by a different son of Horus that lived in the underworld. This is myth. Um, and put up for review, I guess. Like, is this person well enough to go into the afterlife? Um, so those organs were pulled out and put in their specific jar. So the one with Happy, um, I believe Happy was the one that got the lungs. I'm, I would have to look, but <laughs> it's been a while guys, but, um, each organ would go into its designated, um, s uh, jar, whoever was reviewing it, um, so those were the four that were pulled out. The rest of them were completely thrown away. Spleen, thrown away. Bladder, thrown away. Everything else was thrown away except for the heart. The heart in the center was left in the body. Now you're just like, uh, isn't that going to decompose too? Like that's, that's not sanitary. Why remove everything else and not the heart? Back then they believed the heart was the held the uh the person's soul or they they believed it hold, held the person's soul and was responsible for their feelings form of thinking their center energy that is why they kept that inside the body now if you remember the 
coming into the afterlife, they need everything with them. Obviously, they need a soul to live in the afterlife. So they believe the heart held that soul. That will become the vehicle to transport the body and the soul over to the afterlife. That's a little confusing, um, but the heart was what they called the most important part. And that's why they left it inside. Because if you think, if you really think about it, if you didn't have the technology that we do now, you would think whatever's in the center is the most important. That's just how it is. So keep that in mind. Uh, number three, after that, um, they emptied the body, obviously, but they would stuff the body with, um, with natron. Natron is basically a, a very, very harsh salt. So they would stuff the entire bar body with the salt until it was for, um, until it was filled. Not only that, the entire, pl like the stone slab that the body was sitting on, they would even cover that to preserve the skin. Um, so that sucker was covered. Sometimes you couldn't even see the body because it was so covered in this salt. What salt does is it eliminates bacteria from decomposing. Bacteria and cells are the reason behind decomposing. If you stop and clean out that bacteria with harsh salt, it's going to stay preserved longer. And that's why, like, if you've seen stores, if you get regular raw meat, say you get regular raw meat, it's going to stay like that for maybe, like, two or three days in the fridge, maybe, and then you're going to have to throw it away because it'll just start, it'll just start getting nasty and old. If you put salt on meat and you let it sit for many days, you get what's called jerky, people. Jerky will last a long time. Um, sh on shelves, everything. Jerky will last a long time because it's been dehydrated. It, that bacteria has been cleaned off of it. That is why it is so important to understand that method would actually work. What the Egyptians knew was, okay, we got to get rid of, we got to clean this sucker out. We have got to make sure this is preserved as long as we can. Kill the bacteria. They didn't know what bacteria was, but they learned through countless studies that, hey, something's causing this thing to, to break down for this body to decompose. We need to stop that. And this salt is helping that. So we're going to use this. Um, but now we have scientific proof that actually backs that out. Um, so again, they would stuff that thing. Um, the next thing is um, they would remove the stuffing after it sat in the salt for 40 to 50 days. 40 to 50 days. That is almost two months, people. Where are they storing all these salty bodies? <laughs> That is where a lot of speculation comes into play, where we're not entirely sure how they did that, but they would have to store these bodies somewhere. Um, it would help that only the nobles and the pharaohs got this um, opportunity um, to be preserved, uh, more so than the regular people. But um, again, we're still trying to figure things out. Um Ancient Greece was really the start of anything written history. Um, and so did ancient China. Ancient China did that a little bit too. Um, ancient Egypt, all we have is hieroglyphs, what we can find, and just making our educated guesses. Um, and that's something I want you to think about too. So 40 to 50 days in a salt bath, really. Then they remove all of that salt. Um, so, of course, by that point, the muscle and the skin would be extremely tough. Like, if, you, if you've ever felt jerky, it's, it's, it's really rough compared to just squishy meat. It's, it's rough. It's rigid. So, that's, imagine that on a human body. That's what, that's what would happen when you dehydrate it with salt. 
Um, the next part would be um, after the stuffing is removed, the, um, they wrap the body in linen or cloth. That is the most memorable part that people think, okay, yeah, we're mummifying a human being. Yeah, we're making a mummy here. Um, it's the wrappings. Now, the wrappings had to be very, very tight. Reason being is that if it is too loose, air can get to it, bacteria can get to it. They had to wrap that body so tight in linen and cloth that they would lower the risk of bacteria getting in. And um, not only that, they would have to start from head and go all the way to toe. And the arms would have to be in the classic mummy picture. We don't see them like this. That's not a real mummy, guys. They would have their arms like this. If they were a pharaoh, they would have their, um, their crook and their flail with them. And they would wrap in that fashion. Um, and then the last step, finally, um, was to place the wrapped body in a sarcophagus. Um, all mummies had a sarcophagus, whether those were made extremely important or not. Um, they had their own sarcophagus. Um, made out of limestone and adorned with jewels and gold, anything you could really imagine. So think think about um, why people would steal a body. Really, they're not trying to steal the body more so than the, than the gold, jewels, and values of the sarcophagus. That's really what they're trying to steal, if you, if you get what I'm saying. Um... So hopefully I've gone through all of the mummification process and kind of explained the um, the little details of it all. If you guys do have questions, feel free to ask me. Basically, I just helped you through this because really this is very self-explanatory. And if you want on the um, the uh, the hook through a hole in the nose, um. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, if you want to put there the other option, some some people think it was some of the natron that they flushed into the nose and then they would like flush it out. Um, if you want to write that in there and that helps you out, go ahead. But to, j just to me, that makes more sense. Um, but again, it's all just educated guesses. Um, tomorrow... We'll be reviewing some of the mummification process and we'll be talk starting to talk about the house of life and the scribes and the doctors that would be involved with the house of life. Um, after that, you're going to have spring break. So it's up to you guys if you want to finish reading uh, the Kane Chronicles over spring break. Um, if you want to just get stuff done and you're bored, uh, sometimes I like to read when I'm bored. So... You guys just finish this if you want. Um, but other than that, I will see you tomorrow.